welcome again to our JDS Chapel service. My name is Dr. Oscar Williams, the Dean of our Worship Arts School here at JDS, and it is week four in the month of September, where all month we've been talking about God's help in troubling times. And today, we talk about God's help in adversity. How do we rely on God to help us through the tough times, the, the challenging times, through the adversities that we experience day to day, week to week, month to month, year to year. And I'm here to tell you that God is a very present help in the time of trouble and in the time of adversity. So we can rely on him, we can trust him because he never sleeps nor slumbers. He is there always. So it is our custom here at JDS to worship and to prepare our hearts for the word of God. So I invite you in whatever space that you might be in to open your heart Open your spirit and allow the Holy Spirit in to talk to you and commune with you as we worship God in spirit and in truth. Let's worship. Would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, as we turn our hearts to you this week, we ask for a deeper revelation of your grace and favor in the midst of our struggles. Lord, we confess that it's hard to trust your good plan when our circumstances are so painful and we can't see the way ahead. But we know your word calls us to walk by faith and not by sight. So we choose to trust you. We lean on your Holy Spirit to guide us, knowing you are always working everything out for our good. Help us to rest in the truth that your plans for us are perfect even when the road is hard. Thank you for never allowing us to go through more than you equip us to overcome. You don't put more on us than we can bear. As we stand firmly in our integrity, faith, and trust in you during these trials, we know you will carry us through and reward our endurance. We pray that through this process of trial and adversity, you would refine us, anchor us in your peace, and establish us firmly in your favor and perfect will. In the power of the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hello, family. I would like to arrest our hearts and lead our thoughts towards pondering this. The book of Genesis, the 38th chapter, tells the story of Joseph, how Joseph is going through different adverse times. The adversity of his brothers selling him into slavery. The adversity of him being ousted and sold into, placed into a foreign land that he knew not of without the familiarity of his family. The adversity of knowing that even in the midst of that, and you can be doing well, that someone lies on him Potiphar's wife, that is, and puts him into prison. The adversity of staying in prison longer than what he should. The adversity of knowing that the moment that you do something good, it seems as though you're taking a couple of steps back. But I also want you to recognize that if you look at Joseph's life, he was probably living it from the standpoint of adversity. Maybe, just maybe, he could not see the favor that God was extending to him even in the midst of adversity. Because even though he was put in the pit, it was his cousins that brought him out of the pit. Even though he was brought into Egypt, that was the place where his dream would be realized. Even though he was the play, in the place of Potiphar's house, he was in a place where even Potiphar being a part of the kings and pharaoh's court could teach him the customs and the culture of the day so that he would not stick out like a sore thumb. And the favor that was on Potiphar's house was because of Joseph. See, everybody was experiencing the blessings and the favor of God because Joseph was there. To Joseph, it may have seemed like he was in adversity, but to God and everybody else that probably saw Joseph's life, he was in favor. So could it be that even in the place of adversity, you could still be in the place of favor? It's all in how you see God moving 
in the midst of your adversity. And I want to pray for you that you would begin to understand the favor of God that is dispensed to all of us, even in adverse times. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for my brother and my sister, and I ask and pray that even as we ponder the thought of favor being on our lives through adverse times, that we will also ponder, Father, the principle of operating with integrity and character and faith even through adverse times to see the kind of kingdom success that not only you can be proud of, but that we can stand in. I pray in Jesus' name, Father, for my brother and my sister and ask that our minds would rise to another level of consciousness and faith and knowing that even though we may be in adverse times, we are absolutely blessed and highly favored. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God of mercy, we submit totally. Oh, oh, oh. Let every single breath give you praise and glory. Hallelujah. Come on, this is our prayer. We say, flood us with your joy. Send your rain in this place. Hallelujah. And we pray, overwhelm our hearts with your love hey. and your grace. Our hearts desire. Our hearts desire. Come on, it's for you. Come on, somebody look to Jesus now. Come on, sing to Jesus now. Say, we delight in your presence. So please, will you have your way? Yes. Come on, back to the top. Come on, let's all say it together. God of mercy, say. God of mercy, we submit. Come on, totally. Oh, let every single breath, oh, every single breath. Bring you praise and glory. Yeah. Flood us with your joy. Flood us with your joy. Send your rain. Hallelujah. Send it in this place. How we need you. How we want you. Come on. Overwhelm our heart. Come on. You got to pray this with your and your grace come on say our hearts desire yes it is for you to have your way have your way have your way we delight in your presence Your will be done. Have your way. Have your way. 
your kingdom come, let your will be done. Have your way. Let the city be saved, let the dead be raised. Have your way. Let the city be saved, let the dead be raised. Have your way. Let the city be saved, let the dead be raised. Have your way. City be saved, let the dead be raised. Have your way. Let the blind man see, set the bound man free. Have your way. Let the blind man see, set the bound man free. Have your way. in our minds to living in this liminal space of between where we started and where God is calling for us to go. Let us bring our hearts and our minds towards trusting in and believing in God's word and
Hello, family. Our Old Testament scripture this week comes from Zephaniah 3 and 17, the New International Version. The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. Our New Testament scripture comes from James chapter 1, verses 2 through 5 in the King James Version. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his blessed word. Well, welcome, friends, to the moment in our chapel service where we get to dive more into the Word of God. And, and all month long, we, you know we've been talking about how God is helping us through these troubling times, through adverse times. And today, we focus on God's favor in adversity. Isn't it amazing how we can find the hand of God even in the most troubling times? Have you ever experienced in your life something that was meant for bad and then God showed you the good in it and you look back on it and said, you know what, it was good that I was afflicted. Sometimes it doesn't feel good in the moment, but we know that it's working for our good. And so we want to focus on God's favor in adversity. Let's pray. Father, I pray that the word today be so relevant to the hearts and minds of your people that it strikes a car within our spirits and it reminds us that you are with us in the good, in the bad, and in the indifferent. Be in this space with us. Uh, we give you all reign, God, to do what you do, and let's be God. In Jesus' name, amen. So our scripture reference is from Genesis chapter 39, verses 2 through 3, and it's a familiar passage. Let me read it for you. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered. And he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did. You know, in times of adversity, it's easy to feel forsaken or forgotten by God. The weight of our trials can obscure our perception of God's presence. However, the Bible consistently reminds us that God's favor it's not only evident in times of prosperity, but also, and perhaps more profoundly, in times of adversity. One of the greatest examples of this truth is the life of Joseph, whose story beautifully illustrates that God's favor is not limited to circumstances that appear favorable on the surface. Instead, his favor is most powerful when we're in our weakest. And his hand is guiding us even when the world seems to be all against us. Today, I want to explore with you the story of Joseph and other biblical figures who faced unimaginable adversity but overcame it through God's unyielding favor. And though our stories may not be in the Bible, though we may not have chapters and books written about us, I submit to you that we are also a part of that, that legacy of seeing God's favor even in our adversity. That in your own life, if you take a look back over the years that you have been in ministry or in school or, or in whatever field that you're in and, and notice how God has brought you through continuously, that at times where you felt like it was your lowest or at times that you felt like that you could not get up, suddenly the hand of God showed up to remind you that, lo, I am with you always even until the end of the world. So Joseph's story begins in Genesis chapter 37, where we learn that he was the favorite son of Jacob. And this special status bred jealousy amongst his brothers. <laughs> Can you imagine only being called to do what you do and that yielding jealousy from those around you that should be supporting you and lifting you up? 
<laughs> his brothers could not stand the favor that Joseph enjoyed, both from his father and from the prophetic dreams that foreshadowed his rise above them. Their jealousy turned to hatred and hatred to action when they sold Joseph into slavery. Joseph was a young man with dreams and aspirations that was stripped of his family and his freedom and his status. Imagine the heartbreak and the trauma Joseph must have felt, betrayed by his own blood brothers, sold like a piece of property and shipped off to a foreign land. He had to have wondered, where was God in this suffering? Have you ever wondered that? That in the midst of what you're dealing with, where is God? in all of this, in the grief, in the trauma, in the loss, in the trials, in the job loss, in, in, in the economy downfall. Where is God in all this? Why is God remaining silent in these adverse times? Many of us have experienced betrayal just like this from those that are closest to us. Yet, in the midst of these painful experiences, we are reminded that God's favor does not depart from us. As Joseph arrived in Egypt as a slave, mind you, in the house of Potiphar, an Egyptian official, he could have despaired. He could have been depressed. I mean, uh, to be honest, I'm sure I would. If my siblings had have sold me off and here I am, nobody knows, nobody's coming to look for me and now I'm sold into slavery, I would probably have a hard time holding on to my faith and holding on to the promises of God. But Genesis 39 and 2 tells us something remarkable. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered. And ain't that amazing? That how the Lord can be with you even at your lowest? That how you can find the hand of the Lord even at the most despairing times of your life? That even in his lowest moment, his lowest state, God was with Joseph. His status may have changed in the eyes of men, but in God's eyes, Joseph remained favored. Man, that's a word right there. That your status may change. People may look at you differently. You might even look at yourself differently. But I am so thankful that God never changes his mind about us. God's plan for us is the same as it was before we were formed in our mother's womb to prosper us and bring us to an expected end. So don't get caught up on where you are right now. Don't get caught up on how it looks right now. Remember, God has not changed his mind about you. God favored Joseph even through adversity. When adversity struck, we have to remember when adversity strikes, we have to remember that God's favor is not tied to our earthly status or circumstances. Even when people mistreat us, betray us, plot against us, sell us off, do all manner of evil against us, God's presence and favor remains. It is not contingent off of how people look at you or how people treat you. God's favor, thank you, Holy Spirit, God's favor is so present that there's nobody or anybody or anything that can change his mind about you and can take his presence and take his favor from you. That's shout news. Because be honest, people would love to be able to influence the favor of God on your life. People would love to be able to have this one-on-one -on -one connection with God and say, you know, I don't, like, I don't like them no more, Father. Remove your hand. But I am so thankful that even through the plot and the plan of the enemy, not even the enemy has the ability, the influence, or the power to remove the favor of God from off of our lives. Wow. We would call that a Selah moment. That means to think on that, to let that reflect in your heart. Whew. All right, so going back to the story of Joseph, God sees our pain and he walks through our pain with us. Now, in the story of Joseph, his life took another unexpected turn. <laughs> Just when it seemed like he was rising in Potiphar's household, a false accusation from Potiphar's wife landed Joseph in prison. This can be found, you know, when we look at Genesis chapter 13, verses 19 to 20, we see this story unfold. Once again, Joseph finds himself in a pit, both literally and figuratively, betrayed and punished 
for something he did not do. But the pattern we see in Joseph's life continues here in prison. Genesis 39, 21 tells us, but the Lord was with Joseph and showed him steadfast love and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Man, wait a minute. You mean to tell me that in my most destitute, desolate place, that God will still allow me to have favor and influence? That no matter what the situation might be, no matter what the circumstance might be, no matter where people try to put me, no matter how they lie on me, no matter how they betray me, no matter how they try to keep their foot on my neck, that God will cause me to rise even out of my lowest state? Not just me, but I'm speaking to you, I'm speaking to us. That yes, it might be hard right now. And if you focus only on your present state, you will not allow yourself to see how God is using even the situation you're in right now to bring him glory and to lift you up. Joseph's situation seemed hopeless, just like some of ours. But God's favor was still upon him. Despite the injustice Joseph faced, he did not lose faith in God. He continued to work diligently. And even in prison, even confined, God's favor manifested in his rise to leadership within the jail. I mean, listen, you got you to be sure enough called by God to be in chains and still be able to use the anointing and favor on your life. That's why I know the anointing cannot be confined. It cannot be held. When you are called, when you are chosen, there is no jail. There is no confinement. There are no shackles. There is no situation that can keep you down. When God has his hand on your life, when God has called you to greater and greater is in you, greater will come out of you no matter where you are. You have to remember you are not your circumstance. You are not your situation. You are not what you did. You are who God has called you and named you to be. And you have to keep that at the forefront of your mind because life will try to jail you sometimes. Life will try to put you in shackles. But you have to understand greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world, than he that is in the situation around me. Greater is the gift that God put in me. Greater is the anointing that God put in me. Greater is the glory that I carry than the situation situation that I am in. Joseph's story reminds us that regardless of how bleak our circumstances appear, God's hand is still guiding us. In times of personal hardship, we are tempted to give in to despair. But Joseph wrote, shows us, reminds us that we must remain steadfast in our faith. Just as God was with Joseph in the prison, he's with us in our times of darkness when the world sees us as forgotten. God sees us as beloved. How often do we find ourselves in situations where we feel trapped or unjustly treated? You know, like Joseph, we must trust that God's favor can shine even in the darkest places. And I'm not professing that that is easy. I'm not saying that it's easy to just look up and say, okay, God, I know I'm being beaten. I know I'm being mistreated. I know I'm being lied on. I know I'm being unjustly put out. Oh, but I know this is your favor. No, the reality of it is it takes a minute to get to that place. Sometimes you got to labor with that thing. Sometimes you got to pray on your face and say, God, I don't understand this. What is happening? Sometimes you have to be honest. Don't be afraid to be honest with God. God is not intimidated by our honesty. God, this is a dark place, and I need to see your head. Sometimes I wake up and say, Father, I just need to know that you're with me. Just let the wind of God blow past me. I know that the situation might, cha might not change. I know that I may have this same debt, the same bill, the same problem when I wake up tomorrow. But if I can just feel the wind of God blow past me, if I can just understand, see a glimmer of hope, it will remind me that, that I am still your favorite child. And sometimes we have to ask God, God, show me even in this dark place, show me the light. Our circumstances may seem like a prison. But God's favor brings us freedom in ways the world, they just can't understand. Years passed and Joseph remained in prison. However, his ability to interpret dreams, his gift mm, made room for him. Eventually, it brought him to the attention of Pharaoh. Through God's wisdom, Joseph interpreted Pharaoh's troubling dreams, revealing a coming famine. 
Pharaoh, recognizing the spirit of God in Joseph, elevated him to the second highest position in Egypt. Now, Joseph went on from being a forgotten prisoner to the prime minister of Egypt. Hmm. Now, listen, I know this. These, sometimes we read these Bible stories and, 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 and we just say, oh, man, that was nice. But you have to understand, I mean, we can see that in present times, not just in a biblical character, but in our own life. I am a witness that sometimes the situation that I thought I would die in becomes a situation that resurrected me into a brand new position. And just like Joseph, you can go from the prison and the pit all the way to the palace because God's favor cannot be contained. And I want you to be reminded that it was the gift that was put inside Joseph. Here, Joseph was having dreams, if you remember earlier in the story, Joseph was having dreams about himself that he was interpreting, never knowing that one day that unforeseen gift, that, that thing that he discarded, that thing that he thought would, 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 would cast him off and curse him, that thing that had him being the vial of, of a person in front of his siblings, that thing, that very thing would be the very gift that would bring him out of desolation into the promised place where God had put him. Don't despise your gifting. Don't despise how people see where your gift is now. Don't despise what people say about your gifting. Keep using your gift. Keep walking in your gift. Keep walking in that anointing because you never know when God's going to use the very thing that people discarded to be the very thing that resurrects people all around you. What seemed like random events in Joseph's life of betrayal and slavery, prison, man, these are all a part of God's sovereign plan to position Joseph exactly where he needed to be. Through Joseph, God would preserve not only Egypt, but also his own family, Joseph's own family, yes, including the very brothers who had betrayed him. That's why you got to get that, 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 that vial out your heart. You got to get bitterness out your heart because you can't be the blessing that you need to be unless you ask God to heal those places that have been wounded because your blessing or your rise may be connected to your ability to forgive those who betrayed you and did you wrong because you're going to have to help them and you're going to have to be the example of Christ in the earth. Joseph's rise to power was not just a personal triumph. It was a testimony to God's faithfulness and favor. In Genesis 50, 20, Joseph himself reflects on the events of his life, saying, You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Man, you intended for it to harm me. But God intended for it to work out for my good. I love that because sometimes I've heard people misquoted and they put the emphasis on what you did been for evil, God turned it for my good. And that's a little misconstrued there because what Joseph is saying here is what was intended for evil, it played out but God's intention for it from the beginning was for it to be good. Now, why is that good news for us? That's good news is that there are things in our life that we will go through that at the beginning of it, we don't understand why am I going through this? Why am I going through this loss? Why am I losing this job? Why, why can't my business get off the ground? Why, why am I having this trouble in my family? Why am I going through this sickness in my body? And the intent of it from one perspective, could be, man, this is wrong, this is hard, this is evil. But what this is reminding me and what I want to remind us is that God's intentions from the beginning are never to harm us. His intentions, though we may not understand it, are always for good. So if we have that in our head, we will enter into trials and tribulations and even adversity with a different mindset. 
We'll go in and say, you know what, God, I don't know what this is for. I don't know what you're doing. But what I do know is that some kind of way this is going to turn out for my good so I can trust you and I can hope in you and I can believe and I don't have to give up heart because I understand you're not a God that should lie. Neither should you repent. If you spoke it and you did, you're going to bring it to pass. And I just want to stop and remind you that in whatever scenario, situation or circumstance that you are in right now, God has already intended from the beginning of it for it to work out for your good. So don't fret. Stop worrying. Put that anxiety to the side. It's going to work towards your favor. Because God's favor does not always lead to an immediate change in our circumstances. Joseph had to endure years of hardship before God's plan was fully revealed. I mean, years. This was not an overnight thing. He didn't just pop up in prison and then all of a sudden, now I'm going to go to the palace. No, there were years, probably years of jo Joseph questioning God and years of tears and years of angst and years of being angry and, and saying, God, why am I in this situation? I didn't do anything wrong. What is going on? But the thing about it is Joseph remained attached to God's plan. He never forsook the gift of God, and he knew how to maximize what God had put inside of him. So no matter what state he was in, he went to work because the gift could not be contained. And eventually, through his hardships, God's plan was fully revealed in his life. However, God's favor was with him every step of the way, orchestrating each event to fulfill his divine purpose. In our own lives, we may not see the full picture right away, but my brothers and my sister, we can trust that God's favor is working for our good, even in adversity. Joseph's story is not the only example of God's favor shining through in times of adversity. Throughout the Bible, we see countless figures who faced trials but overcame them through God's favor. But Moses. Moses faced rejection from his own people and fled into the wilderness. He doubted his ability to lead and to serve, but God's favor was upon him, calling him to deliver the Israelites from slavery. And despite Moses' personal challenges, God favor in, God's favor enabled him to accomplish the impossible. And, and what about David? <laughs> King David spent years on the run from King Saul. Saul was trying to kill him. Yet even in the wilderness, David experienced God's favor. David was anointed king long before he ever sat on the throne. And through many of his trials, God promised to fulfill David's purpose. Esther. Y'all remember Esther? A Jewish orphan who became queen of Persia at a time when her people were threatened with annihilation. Esther was brave and she was favored by God. So much so that she was able to save her people from destruction. I love the story of Esther because it shows that even in the face of great danger, God's favor <laughs> can turn the tide. And the apostle Paul, he faced persecution, imprisonment, constant hardship, all because of his faith, all because of his turn to the faith. Because he, he was, he, he was a, a relentless believer but, but his passion was, was put in the wrong place. And when he had that, that, that enlightening experience on the road to Damascus, here he has this, this, this encounter with God, and his faith is now changed to serve the one and true living Savior. That's when the hardships happen. Man, ain't it something? You would have thought that he would have more hardships not serving Jesus than when he did, but his hardships happened, his imprisonment happened, his shipwreck happened when he turned his faith toward the Lord. Yet, he still recognized that God's favor was upon him, allowing him to spread the gospel and fulfill his calling despite all of the opposition that he faced. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, Paul recounts the words of Christ, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power hmm, is made perfect in your weakness. 
In every one of these examples I just gave you, adversity was not a sign of God's absence, but rather an opportunity for his favor to shine through. We, we, us, we too can face hardships with confidence, knowing that God's favor is upon us. Joseph's story and the stories of so many others remind us that God's favor is not negated by adversity. Instead, adversity often becomes the stage on which God's favor is powerfully displayed. Whether we're facing personal betrayal or unjust circumstances or overwhelming challenges, we can trust that God is with us, friends. His favor is going to remain on us. He's going to guide us. He's going to sustain us. And ultimately, he's going to bring us to a place of fulfillment that he has ordained for our lives. Let us do this like Joseph. Hold on to our faith. Don't get weary. Even in the midst of trials, hold on, knowing that God's favor is not diminished by our adversity. Instead, it is in these moments that God's favor becomes most evident, carrying us through to victory, the victory that he has prepared for us. Amen and amen. Oh, family, listen, I hope and pray that these chapels are blessing you and that they're finding you right at the place in the area of your need, what you need to hear, what you need to think on, what you need to ponder on. Every week, we create them so that you can be encouraged, even in the middle or towards the end part of your week. So I pray that you are being blessed by it. I want to confer a blessing upon you today, that the blessing of favor and the favor of Joseph would be upon your life. That's what I want to confer upon you today, that no matter what is happening around you, no matter how bad things look, no matter how bleak it may seem, that you would plug into and lock into the favor of God that is on your life even now. Father, thank you so much for this day. I confer upon my brother and my sister, oh God, the ability to be able to see, to feel, to sense, to live out, to live under, to live in your favor, even as we may be walking through adversity. I pray, Father, for the blessing and the conference, Father, of your Holy Spirit, oh God, to rest, rule, and abide, and to commune with us now, henceforth and forever, that your favor will overtake us, and your favor will take us up. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, my friend, my brother, listen. Go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Remember, all of the things that God has favored you in, even in the midst of whatever adverse situation you're going through, I want you to go forth in peace to love, serve the Lord, and experience that favor with great fervor. Peace.